This is Joe Garagiola along with Ernie Harwell welcoming you to the third game of the 1963 World Series brought to you by Gillette. Maker of the Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor and remarkable Super Blue Blades. Extra rich foamy instant lather. Convenient right guard power spray deodorant. And new sun up aftershave for that top of the morning feeling. And by Chrysler Corporation, makers of the new 1964 Plymouth, Chrysler, the Imperial, Dodge, and Dodge Truck. Today, your host is Chrysler Imperial. In appreciation of your continued support, Gillette and Chrysler also bring you the annual Blue-Gray football game and the 1964 Rose Bowl game exclusively on NBC. Jim Bouton will be the pitcher for the Yankees. He has just come out of the Yankee dugout. He starts to warm up with coach Jim Hegan. That uh, Yankee dugout is along the first baseline. Don Drysdale, who is the pitcher for the Dodgers, is yet to come out. A beautiful day for baseball here in Los Angeles. Dodger Stadium jam-packed as the Dodger fans have just been waiting weeks, literally waiting outside this ballpark weeks, to see this World Series game. The Dodgers lead by two games, having won the first two games in Yankee Stadium. The first one, Sandy Koufax, the big winner. The score five to two. In the second ball game, Johnny Padres. The score four to one. Big Don Drysdale has just come out with Joe Becker, the coach of the Los Angeles Dodgers, to start to loosen up. Mountain has won 21 games and lost seven. Drysdale has won 19. He has lost 17. The weather, as we said, beautiful. In fact, it's great all the way around for the fans and for the players. A weatherman here in Los Angeles, obviously a Dodger fan, said yesterday that there was 40% chance that it might rain and then quickly added, I hope not. Well, it doesn't look like there's a chance for rain. And it's just a great day to be here at Dodger Stadium to watch this third game of the World Series. For the ball players, there's enough clouds up there to break up the high sky, those little angels that help on pop flies, and the ball players are happy with the weather. The infield is fast as far as the dirt part is concerned. The grass part is slow and it's soft, which is a little bit uh, different than what the Yankee ball players uh, found during the course of the regular American League season. And we're saying that uh, usually it's uh, hard and fast all over, but the infield, especially in front of home plate, which has just been sodded, is a bit slow. This broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our listening audience and any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. You hear about the short fence in right field in Yankee Stadium. There is no such thing here at Dodger Stadium. The ballpark, 3.30 down both the right field line and the left field line. The slots in left center and in right center where most of the home runs are hit are 380. Dead center field, 410. You really have to put a charge into a ball to get it into those seats. And of course, like most of the ballparks, let's put it that way, ball players say that the ball travels much better during the daytime than at night. Of course, that depends a whole lot on that pitcher. Get the right guy out there at nighttime, that ball's going to travel pretty good at that. There's a big lineup change. In respect to the Yankee lineup, Roger Maris is not in the lineup, nor is he in uniform. It'll be John Blanchard in right field, replacing the injured Roger Maris. Remember, Roger got hurt in that second game as he ran into the fence trying to make the play on Tommy Davis's ball, which ended up a triple. Here are the lineups, so if you've got your pencils and scorecards or pencil and paper ready, here's the way they'll line up. The Yankees, it'll be Tony Kubek leading off at shortstop. Kubek, shortstop. Batting second, it's Bobby Richardson. Richardson, second base. Batting third, 
Tom Tresh in left field. Tresh, left field. In the cleanup spot, it'll be Mickey Mantle in center field. Mantle, center field. Batting fifth, Pepitone at first base. Joe Pepitone, first base. Batting sixth, it's the catcher Elston Howard. Howard, the catcher. Batting seventh, it's John Blanchard in right field. Blanchard, right field. Batting eighth, it's Boyer at third base. Boyer. And batting ninth, it'll be Jim Boughton. Boughton has won 21. He has lost seven. The Dodgers, with Boughton, a right-hander pitching, have changed their lineup just a bit. Maury Wills will lead it off at shortstop. Wills, shortstop. Jim Gilliam bats second. Gilliam at second base. Gilliam, second base. Batting third, it's center fielder Willie Davis. Willie Davis, center field. In the cleanup spot, it's Tommy Davis, the left fielder. Tommy Davis in left field. Batting fifth, it's Ron Fairley. Fairley will be in right field. And bat fifth, Ron Fairley, right field. Batting sixth, Scourin, the first baseman. Moose Scourin at first base. Batting seventh, it's John Roseboro. Roseboro, the catcher. Batting eighth, it's Trzuski, the second baseman. Dick Trzuski. And batting ninth, Don Drysdale. Drysdale on the season won 19 and lost 17. This ballpark, as we told you, a big ballpark. And as far as the background is concerned, it's interesting that the hitters and the catchers, which is kind of odd in a sense, do complain a little bit because when the, the overhanded pitcher is working because you're looking out towards center field, looking up, and you're looking into the sky. In center field here at Dodger Stadium, they have a big green backdrop to give the hitters a little better background, and it is a very effective background when the fellow comes sidearm or is about three quarters. Now, Drysdale, you'll be able to uh, see the ball just a little bit better than you can a Jim Bouton who comes from right over the top because you're looking up and looking into the sky. It's a little bit of an edge and just one of the little things that ball players look for when they do go into uh, different ballparks. Drysdale in yesterday's workout made a very interesting point when he was talking about that the Yankee hitters will be looking at three different type pitchers when he goes today. In the first game, Sandy Koufax, who came directly overhanded, strictly a fastball overpowering type pitcher, and uh, Johnny Padres, who changed speeds very effectively, a left-hander, a three-quarters pitcher, and now Don Drysdale, a sidearm sinker balling right-hander who can really make it tough on right-hand hitters. His fastball is his best pitch and one of the best descriptions ever of Don Drysdale put out by Dick Groat now with the Cardinals when Groat said it all when he said batting against Drysdale is like trying to keep an appointment with the dentist. That's who it'll be Don Drysdale who is warming up along third against Jim Bouton who continues to throw along the first baseline. The third game of the 1963 World Series is being brought to you from Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. When Don Drysdale takes to the mound here, it'll be his third game in World Series competition. Don was talking with Ben Scully not long ago. Let's listen in. Hey, Don, that's a real clean-looking shave you've got there. Sure, Ben, that's a Gillette shave. Nothing like it to keep a man looking his best, and there's nothing like it for comfort. Don Drysdale and many of men know the easy way to look and feel their best, the quick, refreshing all-Gillette shave. Foamy Instant Lavy Shave Cream gives whiskers a super soaking, keeps them moist, and first easy stroke to last. Slip a super blue blade in your slim adjustable razor and dial the blade setting that's just right for your particular skin and beard. Gillette's exclusive micrometer dial has nine settings. Lower numbers for lighter beards, higher numbers for heavy beards. Right now, as the Gillette World Series Special, get the slim adjustable razor with super blue blades. 
plus foamy, regular, or menthol for only a dollar seventy-nine. It's a two twenty-nine value, so you save fifty cents. Jim Bowden has just completed his warm-up tosses. Don Drysdale continues to fire that ball along the third baseline. A beautiful day for baseball. Man, you couldn't order a better day than they have here at Los Angeles today. This ballpark jam. You know, one other thing that's a very unique uh, as far as Dodger Stadium is concerned, they have seats which are field level. First time I ever saw seats like that was over in Japan. And Mr. O'Malley and the Dodgers have placed seats at field level to give the fans uh, just the field level view. And boy, you just can't get any, any more in a ball game and not be in one and to be at field level. And every seat in this ballpark taken. The umpire is just coming out towards home plate. The color guard is out in center field. Manager Waller Alston is coming up towards home plate. From the third base dugout, Ralph Hoff, the major, coming out from the first base dugout. And in the lineup cards, which makes it official. Roger Maris, not in the lineup, not in uniform. He was taking treatment right up until a few minutes ago. He said he'll be a spectator. We're looking out towards center field now as the color guard gets up to raise the colors here. The umpire still gathered around home plate. Don Drysdale still throwing. Bouton has resumed his throwing. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem, Melchior, sung by Mr. Lawrence Melchior at the Dodger Stadium. We get closer and closer to the beginning of this third game. You know, many times it's an overworked phrase. They say it's a big ball game, but believe you me, every game is a big game in a World Series, a seven-game series. Uh, the mechanics of it is show you that every game is a big game. These Dodgers with the two-game balls go with Don Drysdale. Sandy Koufax ready to go tomorrow. The Yankees... They know exactly where they are, and they feel that if they can just stay closer than they have the last two games, they've been out of the game very, very early, which is a thing these Dodgers have done in the first two games, is jump out to that early lead. Yankees expecting the Dodgers to run even more here in Dodger Stadium before the home folks. 
And it's interesting to point out that when you talk to manager Walter Alston, Maury Wills, who of course is the leading man, a youngster, a little leaguer, has just thrown a perfect strike from 60 feet 6 inches. Boy named Tom Barry, a pitcher and shortstop. He just got out there like he'd been pitching before tremendous crowds all his life and threw a perfect strike. Starting to tell you that Maury Wills, manager of Walter Alston, turns a lot of them loose, but especially Maury Wills, and he is one of the few ball players I have ever heard of that has a stop sign where the manager tells him not to run on a particular situation, such with the man on third and Wills on first, where that big gap is between first and second. It's unusual that they put stop signs on you because most of the time managers have a tough time getting you to really take off, but not with Mr. Wills. We now pause 10 seconds for station identification. WGY is today. Don't strike out with just any old mixer. Mix with a winner. Saratoga Vichy, the world's perfect mixer. Distinctively dry, delightfully carbonated. Saratoga Vichy with a bright yellow label. Both Drysdale and Bowden continue to warm up. The umpires are all stationed. It'll be Larry Knapp behind a plate of the American League. At first base, it's Shags Crawford of the National League. At second base, it's Joe Paparella of the American League. At third base, Tom Gorman of the National League. Down the left field foul line, it's John Rice of the American League. And in right field is Tony Venzon of the National League. And you know you hear about pressure and the pressure on the ball players and the tremendous outside pressure that they get during the World Series. And it's sometimes taken for granted that the umpires that we have just named, what tremendous pressure they're under. Because here they are, six of them, who have no rooting interest in any ball club. They just umpire the ball as it comes across that plate. Or does the man get to that bag before that ball does? There go the Dodgers. with a tremendous roar take the field and defensively Moose Scourin at first base Krzyzewski at second base at shortstop Maury Wills at third base it's Jim Gilliam in left field Tommy Davis in center field Willie Davis in right field it's Ron Fairley the catcher is John Roseboro the pitcher is Don Drysdale coaching at third base is Frank Crossetti and as usual it's Yogi Berra at first base visiting with Moose Scarron. Over in Yankee Stadium, can you imagine? Yogi was talking to Moose and telling him, boy, the shadows are in left field are really tough here. And Moose said, yo, remember, I played 12 years here. But Yogi, the ever-friendly and ever-helpful coach, is just visiting with the Moose and trying to con him out of a couple base hits and maybe talk him into a double play or two. But they got to do it with the ball and the bat. The throw goes down to second base, around the horn, Wills to Gilliam, Gilliam flips it to Don Drysdale, Tony Kubak in that batter's box, outfielders, infielders, and the catcher check the high sky, Drysdale with the pinch of the rosin bag, ready for the first pitch of the 1963 third game of the World Series, and to bring you the play-by-play, -play, here is Ernie Harwell. Well, thank you, Joe, and hi again, everybody. Tony Kubak, the batter. He's had one for eight in the first two series games. The left-hand batter takes a high fastball. We're underway. Ball one from the big right-hander, Don Drysdale. In World Series competition, Don has won one and lost none. He pitches, and it's a fastball wide. 2-0 oh, on the Yankee leadoff man. Gilliam in a little close at third base. The other infielders are back, and the outfield is playing to left a little bit on Tony Kubat. Now Drysdale winds and pitches. Here's the strike, the fastball, and Larry Knapp going up with the right hand. Two and one. That's the count on the leadoff man. The Dodgers lead in the series. Two victories to none. Here's the pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Count. 
Bobby Richardson waiting out on deck. Now the big right hander winds and pitches, and there's a foul fly that'll be out of play on the third base side. Still two and two on Tony. Willie Davis, the uh, center fielder, shades over to the left center field side. Kubek hits up that left center alley quite a bit. Waiting on the 2-2 delivery. Here it comes. Swing, there's a fly ball to left. It'll be foul and in the seats. Still 2-2 on Kubek. Kubek at 257 over the regular season. Dad played the outfield in the Milwaukee Ball Club when Milwaukee was in the old association. Left hand about awaiting. It's a 2-2 count on Kubek. Uh, Drysdale, ready to work. Pitch on the way. Swinging a foul. Back off the plate and into the seats. Still 2-2. He pitches, swinging another foul ball out of play. Tony making him work here on this first batter. Drysdale had 19 victories over the regular season. He lost 17. Struck out 251 for the year. The pitch on the way. Swing a bounding foul right at the plate. Larry Knapp giving it a quick call. A pretty good tip-off on his Drysdale speed is the way they got the defense set up. Uh, Kubek is a great type hitter. He does hit a lot to left center field, but this Dodger defense has Tommy Davis in left field guarding the line. Willie Davis is way over left center field. A lot of room in right center. Tony waits on the 2-2 delivery. Here it comes. Swung on a bounding ball wide at first. Scouring backs up. Drysdale covers, takes the throw in time. The underhand toss from Scourn getting two back on a close play at first base. It was a high hopping ground ball wide of the bag at first base. Here's Bobby Richardson, the young man from South Carolina with one hit in seven trips in the first two games. Gilliam about even with a bag at third on uh, Bobby. Drysdale, the big right-hander, delivers. Here's a foul ball out of play. Back of the plate, over the screen, in the seats. With a fastball pitcher such as Drysdale, you see a lot of fouls. A lot of baseballs used. Don Reddy delivers. Here's a foul again. This one on the screen. Strike two, the count on Richardson. We're just underway in game number three of the 1963 World Series. One out and nobody on in the first inning. As a fly ball lifted back at first base, scouring back pedals into foul territory, makes the count. Richardson fouls out to first baseman Bill Scour. And they're two up and two down with Tom Tresh. Taylor, Michigan coming to bat. The Yankee left fielder has three hits for seven, one home run, and two RBIs. Been the leading Yankee hitter in the first two games. Switch batter batting left-handed against Drysdale. It's a strike and about the knees on the inside corner. Outfield swung around to right on Tom Trash. No score, first inning. Two out and the bases after the Yankees batting. Swing and a miss on a fastball up in the left. Strike two on Trash. Mantle waiting out on deck. Now the wind up by 
Drysdale, he delivers. Watch out, in tight. And almost hit him with a fastball. And a jackknife out of the way of that one. One and two. Tommy Davis, the left fielder, over toward left center. Willie Davis in right center. And Fairley is a deep right fielder right now. The windup, the pitch on the way. Trash takes a fastball wide. It's a 2-2 count on him. Here's the motion in the pitch. He's in. Yankees nothing, and the Dodgers nothing. The Yankees defending this afternoon on Jim Bouton, and the other day we tape recorded a brief conversation Mel Allen had with Jim. Let's listen. Say, Jim, have you tried the new Gillette stainless blade? I have, Mel. I've been getting comfort I never dreamed of, right from the first stroke. In fact, every single shave from each blade is the easiest I've ever had. There's a simple reason for the great things you're hearing about the new Gillette stainless blade. It's this. On stainless steel on any steel, it's the edge that counts. And Gillette edges are the world's sharpest, easy shaving. Mirror finished, incredibly smooth, and yet they're truly durable. You get smooth shaves, fast, effortless shaves, with more of them per blade. And there's unparalleled uniformity from blade to blade, dispenser to dispenser. Enjoy the incomparable Gillette Stainless at the lowest price per blade, six for 89 cents. Jim Bouton, the young Yankee right-hander, in his first World Series competition, up on the mound now to face the Dodgers. With no score in the last half of the first inning here at Dodger Stadium. And we're happy to bring it to you on the NBC radio network this afternoon. Here's Mari Wells, the switch hitter. Batting left-handed against Bowden. Mari has two hits for nine trips in the opening two games of the series. There's a bot back to the mound. Bouton feels it. The throw to first is in plenty of time. Bouton to Pepitone. Here's Jim Gilliam. The Dodger third baseman has two hits for eight trips so far in the series. Wills bunted that ball a little too hard, and he bunted it straight back to the mound. An easy play for Bouton. Bouton won 27 for the season and lost seven. There's a fastball up high on Gilliam. Ball one. Outfield straight away. The infield back except for Boyle. Wide of the bag and even with it a third. It's a ball in too close. 2-0. Two oh. Elston Howard doing the catching for the Yankees. They have Pepitone at first. Richardson at second, Kubek at short, Boy at third. In left field, it's Trash. In center, Mickey Mammel. And in right, John Blanchard. No score in the last half of the first inning at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. Now the windup, the 2 0 delivery. It's a strike, the letter high and in there. Larry Knapp up for the right hand call. Larry, a former boxing referee. Bouton checking out his sign. It's a two-one count on Gilliam. One out and none on. Here comes a fastball that is out of the mitt after a tip foul by Gilliam. And it's a two-two count. Try to move away from that one and it hit his bat. Now Bouton winds and pitches. There's a curve in too tight. Three-two, full count. Bouton's second year with the Yankees, his first one, he won seven and lost seven in 62. 21 and seven. 
for this season. Six footer. He delivers very wide. Union draws a walk. That ball almost got by Elston Howard. High and wide. Here's Willie Davis, who has two hits for seven. And two RBIs in the first two games of the series. Both of Willie's hits were doubled. Splendor left hand batter. No score first inning. Man on first for the Dodgers. They have one away. Davis takes the ball inside for the first by Howard, and Gilliam is back easily. Boy, on uh, the inner grass at third base. Davis about ready, and then decides he'll step away from the plate for a moment. Fountain up to pick up his sign again from Howard. A curveball down low over the plate, but too low. Two and oh, the count on Davis. Davis started this new hitting stance toward the end of the year in a series at Philadelphia. And he finished the season in quite a blaze of base hits. Before that, he had experimented with many batting stances. Leans in, waiting, bent at the knees. 2 0 pitch. Swung on as a drive to right. Here's Blanchett coming in. He's there to make the catch. Davis lines to Blanchett in right field. Gilliam is still at first. There are two out, and here's Tommy Davis, who is the leading hitter in the World Series right now with a 6.25 percentage. A right-hand batting outfielder with five hits and eight trips. Two of those have been triples. One RBI. Tommy Davis at bat, two out and one on for the Dodgers. No score, first inning at Dodger Stadium. It's a curve down low, blocked out in front by Elston Howard. Gilliam on uh, with a base on balls. It's the game's only runner so far. Outfield is deep and to left. Out in the sets, pitches, there's a foul ball out of play in the seats back of the plate. One and one, the count on him. Fountain was born in Newark, New Jersey. He lived in Ridgewood, but he grew up around the Chicago area. Didn't make his high school team up there around Chicago Heights, but uh, really got started in an American Legion competition. Runner goes, the pitch is swung on, there's a line drive to right, it'll be a foul ball. He sent Gilliam that time, and Tommy Davis sliced the foul to right. Be a pretty good gamble uh, with Bounton pitching, the tough pitch to handle with a fellow like this is the overhanded curveball. He's thrown a couple of them that have popped out of uh, Elston Howard's glove. That particular pitch was a fastball, and it would have been a close play at second base. Gilliam, another one of these runners that manager Walter Olsen just turns loose. He doesn't have to worry about them. They can get a good jump. They can take off. He just lets them go on their own. Jim Bowden, the Yankee hurler, up on the mound right at the pitch again. It's a 1-2 count. Davis swings the ground ball foul, bouncing down past third. A little bit too far out in front of that one. I think Bowden changed up on it a little bit. Often says he was uh, quite a fan and uh, scrawny youngster when he was in high school. He didn't have much of a physique, and he put on a lot of weight and gained a lot of strength after he started in baseball. Now he pitches at the ball in the dirt, gets away from Howard. Gilliam breaks the second and goes in. A wild pitch by Bowden. The ball hit in front of the plate, blocked off by Howard to the first base side and Gilliam is on its second now on the wild pitch. Two two that's the count. 
Man on second for the Dodgers. The scoreless first inning. There are two out. Bouton sets. Delivers. Here's a rounding ball to second. decision. The ball was hit sharply past the mound. Richardson got over. It hit him on the foot and bounded into the right field area. Davis is safe at first. Gilliam scored and Los Angeles leads in the first inning one to nothing. Here's Ron Fairley, the right fielder. He swings and pops it up back of the plate. Elston Howard in foul territory makes the catch and the inning is over. The Dodgers get one, one run on one hit. There were no errors and one man left. And at the end of one inning, the Dodgers won, the Yankees nothing. Here's the biggest pen bargain going. The paper mate free fill, and that means free refills. Yes, you buy one famous paper mate piggyback pen for just $1.69. Get an extra piggyback refill free. Or buy a handsome paper make Capri pen for just $1.95 and get an extra jumbo refill free. You get paper make quality and free refills too. You know paper made pens never skip. They even write over butter. And every paper made is guaranteed. It must write or we replace it. Now's the time to get yourself or anyone in your family a new paper made pen while this free refill offer lasts. Buy a Papermate piggyback pen for $1.69, get an extra piggyback refill free, or buy a Papermate Capri pen for $1.95 and get an extra jumbo refill free. Come to the Papermate refill now, wherever Papermate pens are sold. The Dodgers, who lead in the series, two victories to none, have jumped in front again here in game number three as they scored in the first inning on a walk to Gilliam, a wild pitch, and a single by Tommy Davis off the foot of the second baseman, Bobby Richardson. We have a delay now with Mickey Mantle scheduled to lead off. Uh, Gilliam is... Not yet at his third base position. Mantle has failed to hit so far in the series. He's 0 for 7. Be batting left-handed against the right-handed Drysdale. Drysdale goes to 6'6", weighs 210 pounds. Van Nuys, California is his hometown. Here's the pitch to Mantle. He takes a slow curve across. A big bending curveball floated over on Mickey. Strike one call. Dodges ahead. One to nothing in the second. The pitch by Drysdale. There's a bunt attempt by Mantle, and it's over the head of the third baseman. Back to deep short. Fielded by Wills. He has no throw at all, and it's a base hit for Mickey. That's one of the long bunts in World Series history, Joe. I was going to say, Ernie, get the tape measure out. That ball just jumped off that bat, and if there's any rabbit in that baseball, I'd sure check it because she leaped over Gilliam's head, and there was no possible play, and almost a two-base hit. Here's Joe Pepitone at that now, the Yankee first baseman with two hits and seven turns. That's the first Yankee hit, the bunt single by Mickey Mantle, Mantle's first of the series. The pitch is swung on and fouled off the mask of Roseboro, the Dodger catcher. One strike on Pepitone. This is Drysdale's eighth year with the Dodgers. Now the big guy looking in to get his sign, taking a little more time. 
The Dodgers lead the Yankees one to nothing in the second. Throw to first. Mantle is back easily. Mickey still can't go full speed because of his leg injury. Now the set, the pitch on the way. Swing and a miss on an inside pitch about letter high. It appeared there that Pepitone couldn't quite make up his mind. He had started and uh, then he felt like he had to go ahead. It was sort of a stiff arm swing. Strike two the count on Joe. Big drive, Dale takes his set position and delivers. Here's a ball that hits Pepitone. It brushed his shirt on the inside pitch. He's hit by the pitch ball and Mamo will take second. So the Yankees uh, have two men on and nobody out in the second inning. With Elston Howard coming to bat. Elston has three hits in eight trips and one RBI. He and Trash are tied for the most Yankee hits in the first two games. All three of Elston's hits have been singles. Center fielder Willie Davis over in right center, fairly playing uh, Howard almost as a left hand batter. Now the pitch. Swing and a miss on a fastball. Well, Willie Davis is uh, pulling back more to straightaway center on Elson after that first pitch. Two and out for New York. Nobody out. The Dodgers lead the Yankees one to nothing. Second inning. Here's the set foul by right hander Drysdale. And the pitch. Howard bunts the ball. It's a foul ball and out of play. Way up in the air and finally into the seats. Just to the right of the screen behind home plate. Strike two count on Elston Howard. Drysdale won 25 last year and 19 this, but a lot of the National League observers said he was a much better pitcher this season than he was last. Now the runner's edging off. It's a strike two count on Elston Howard. He swings and misses. Struck him out. The second strikeout for Don Drysdale. And John Blanchard comes to bat now. This will be John's first time up in this series. Ernie, this should be a pretty interesting battle because it'll be strength against strength. Drysdale, a great fastball pitcher against John Blanchard, strictly a fastball hitter and a pull hitter. They have really swung around on him. Blanchard digging in now against the big right-hander. Drysdale trying to work out of trouble. There were two on and none out. He got Howard on strikes. Now pitching to the left-hander. Set by Don. The pitch. It's a ball down low. He checked his swing on a low fastball. Johnny Mize, one of the best ever, saw it checking that swing, Joe. Those good hitters seem to always be able to start that bat and stop it when they won. He was a good one. It looked like he'd always take six swings when he'd get up there. One and all. Oh, that's the count on Blanchard. It's a swing, a bounding ball to second base. Drzewski is going to first to scour, and the runners move up. Blanchard is out for the second out. Pepitone takes second, and Mano moves over to third. That'll bring up Cleek Boyer with the Yankees at second and third. There are two down. And Roseboro goes out to talk with his hurler. Dodgers one and the Yankees nothing at Dodgers Stadium. We beam it to you on the NBC radio network here this afternoon from Los Angeles. Well, they're going to bunch a boy up in the middle a little bit and won't matter too much because you'll be passed here on purpose to pitch to the pitcher Jim Bowden. There's ball two intentionally wide to Cleek. This will be the first walk on the part of Drysdale. It's the 
third one outside. I think Drysdale yelling in to say, how many more have we got? <laughs> and there's number four. So the pitcher, Jim Bowden, will be coming to bat. Let's see how the outfield is going to play him. I believe they're going to play him to hit the right. Playing in close enough, Bernie, and get the field a little crowded up there, like he might be in a phone booth or an elevator, right. as tight as they are on him. In real close. The Yankees have the bases loaded. They're two out in the second. Dodgers lead them one to nothing. There's a swing and a miss by Bowden. He swung on a high fastball. Uh, stepped away from his umpiring position and just said a word to Jim right there at the plate. Strike one, the count on him. Base is loaded. Uh, still keeping an eye at Mantle on third. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss again. Fastball right through the middle. Mantle is at third base. Epitone at second and Boya at first. The Dodgers lead it one to nothing over the Yanks here in the second inning. Strike two count. The pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. And that returns inside. The third strikeout for Drysdale. No runs, one hit, no errors, three are left. And at the end of one and one half innings, the Dodgers won and the Yankees nothing. During the season, Nelson Howard was the most effective Yankee hitter in Dodger Stadium as he played here against the Angels. And here's a recording of Mel Allen chatting with Elston after a game the other day. Say, Alec, you're a real steady man on the field. Does that go for shaving, too? Yes, Mel. I always stay with Gillette. I get easy shaves every time, clean and quick. As Elston says, the ship fast shave, really smooth shaves. The ones to stay with are all Gillette shaves. Give your beard a real soaking. Keep it that way. A whole shave through with extra rich, foamy, instant lather shave cream. With a slim, adjustable razor, you can shave close with real comfort. It has Gillette's exclusive micrometer dial that lets you select one of the nine blade settings to match your skin and beard exactly. For clean, easy shaving at a saving, get the Gillette World Series Special. Slim, adjustable razor with super blue blades. Plus foamy, regular, or menthol. All yours for just a dollar seventy-nine. It's a two twenty-nine value, so you save fifty cents. Here's the last half of the second at Dodgers Stadium. The Dodgers lead New York one to nothing. Bill Scourin, the Dodger first baseman, the lead off for Los Angeles in their second. Bill has four for seven in the first two games. One of them a home run. Bouton serves a curveball that's swung on and missed by Scourin for strike one. Mantle over to right center on his former teammate and playing him deep. Infield back. Richardson back on the right field grass. Here's a line drive to left. It'll be in for a base hit. Trent feels it on a couple of skips. Scourin is out with a single. That's his fifth hit. Tommy Davis has six now, both of them coming up with one hit in this game already. They've been the big guns in the Dodger attack. It's John Roseboro, whose three-run homer was the key hit in the Dodger victory in the opening game of the series. And that's his only hit so far, one for eight for John. Left-hand batting catcher. Boya in tight on him. He swings and hits a fly ball to deep right, maybe foul. It's down that line, and it's a long foul fly out of play. He had the distance on that one, but not quite the direction. Strike one on Roseboro. After that long foul fly, Austin Howard got it out to talk with... Jim Bouton on the mound. Scourin is at first here in the Dodgers' second. The Dodgers lead the Yankees one to nothing. And there's nobody out. 
Rosebar swings and misses. Gave him a big change up, and he swung much too early. Pepitone holding on the back with a run of Scourin. Richardson is to the glove side toward the hole between first and second. Kubek near the bag at second. There's a foul fly out of play on the third base side. Go strike two on Roseboro. A great setting here at Dodger Stadium. Tremendous crowd, great weather. A lot of tenseness and excitement. Just feeling the air. Strike two the count. Fountain serves over to first. Cowan back very easily on that one. Uh, the young right-hander in his first World Series game. He's going to get his sign. Strike two on Roseboro. Here's the pitch. It's a wild one. It gets by Howard. Goes to the screen. There's Cowan taking second. Nelson Howard picks the ball off the screen and holding it second is Cowan. It'll be a wild pitch, the second wild pitch of the game. We pause 30 seconds now for station identification. This is WGY Schenectady. You know, baseball players have to keep trim. It's a business with them, and they watch their weight. Maybe you'll never play in a World Series game, but if you're watching your weight, Saratoga Vichy is the beverage for you. There's not a single calorie in Saratoga Vichy, just refreshing, tangy goodness in every sip. Reach for Saratoga Vichy for a real thirst quencher without a calorie in a case. With a perfect highball, mix with the best. Get Saratoga Vichy, now on special sale at your favorite store. Rosebar fouls out the next bit, and it's still a one-two count. Ernie Harwell and Joe Garagiola at Dodgers Stadium in Los Angeles. Dodgers lead one to nothing. In the second, they have a man on second and nobody out. Rosebar waiting on a one-two delivery. Here it is. Swing on the bounding ball to second. Richardson has it. The toss will be to Pepitone, and on to third will go Scourin. Rosebar did his job. He got that man to third base, hitting the ball to the right side of the infield. Dick Krasuski, the right-hand batting second baseman, steps in now. Dick had a single his first time up in the World Series. That's his only hit so far. One hit in seven turns. The infield is in almost to the grass. Scouring on third with one away. The pitch on the way. Swing a foul ball out of play. Get these guys like Krasuski up there in a spot like this, Ernie. It really gets you thinking about the possibility of the squeeze play. And it's just a, strictly a guess and gamble play. Scour, not a very fast runner. More likely if they do go to it, it'll be a safety squeeze. Hot and ready. Winds and pitches. Here's a cut and a miss. He tipped foul the ball to the mid of Elston Howard. And the county strike two on Krasuski. Outfield straight away and shallow on him. Bouton uh, gives a glimpse to a third. Keeping the eye out on Scour, who's edging down that line a little bit more. Now uh, the right-hander ready to the buzz. Here's a strike call. He struck him out. A curveball, rather high, breaking over for call strike three. That's the first strikeout for the Yankee Earl of Jim Bowden. And now Drysdale comes to bat. Kind of hitter is this fellow, Joe? He's a good hitter. I mean a good hitter, not a good hitter for a pitcher. He'll get a piece of that ball. He'll battle you for it. He's going to have to go for that uh, curveball that Bowden's been throwing. It's a good overhanded one, and you can bet he'll reach for it. Tries to the batter. It's a ball up high. Dodgers ahead, one to nothing. They've got a man at third in the last half of the second. Now they're two down. The pitch on the way, swinging a foul ball out of play. Back into the crowd behind the plate. One and one. Drysdale had seven home runs in one season. That was 1958. One of the few pitchers that works on his hitting stand. That's how serious he takes it. 
No, I saw him down there, and the, when all the photographers were around, they were taking pictures of him with a bat. <laughs> Gives a picture a thrill, doesn't it? Here's the one one delivery. It's a ball down low. Two and one to count on Don. Giving me a thrill if they'd have done that once in a while. <laughs> now, Joe, they did that to you every time. Dodgers lead one to nothing. They've got Scourn at third with two down. About picking up his sign. Here's the windup. Here's the pitch. It's a foul on the screen. Two and two on the pitcher. Big Dodgers Stadium packed to the capacity. They seat about 56,000 here. First ballpark built by a private fund since Yankee Stadium was built back in 23. Here's a pitch. It's a ball up too high. Both count. High and outside with a curve. Dodgers one. Yankees nothing. Second inning. Pitchers have thrown a good many pitches so far here in the early innings. Here it comes. It's a ball outside. Gave him the fastball wide. Walk number two on top. The man at first and a man at third, and it'll bring up Mari Will. Will's a little shortstop who will be batting left at it. First time he batted, he bunted, bunted the ball back rather hard, and Bouton had an easy play at first base on him. The windbreaker is brought out for Drysdale, and uh, he's putting it on now over first base. Dodgers one, Yanks nothing, second inning. The Dodgers have two men on. And two out. Mari Wells, the batter, backs away from a curve. It's inside. Ball one on Mari. Now time call. There goes Howard out. Howard oh, just wants to settle this young pitcher down because this Wills liable to do anything, and you don't want to take your concentration away from the hitter. That's the big man he's got to get. And with Scarn at third and Drysdale at first, look like young Bob may be worried more about the base runners. Ball one, that's the count on Mari Will. Two out, runners at first and third. Set the pitch. He swings as a pop fly in the left, coming in his trash. He's under it now and makes the catch, and the side retired. Wills flies to Tom Trash, and that retires the Dodgers in their second. They have no runs on one hit. There were no errors on two left, and at the end of two, Dodgers one of the Yankees, nothing. Ron Fairley is mighty happy over starting his first game of the series. And listen to how Ron responded to this question. Have you tried the new Gillette stainless blade? I sure have. And as soon as they came out, what a shave I got. The first time, great. With plenty more like it in each blade. No other blade even compares to the Gillette stainless. Try the new Gillette Stainless, and you'll agree with Ron. This blade gives you superb comfort from the first stroke and keeps on giving you more clean, quick shaves, easy, refreshing shaves. That's true because on any steel, it's the edge that counts. And Gillette edges are the sharpest, easiest shaving in the world. Here's a new meaning to the phrase shaving comfort, plus uniform, high quality, unequal by any other maker's blade. Supreme shaving luxury from blade to blade, dispenser to dispenser, and each blade engineered to fit your Gillette razor exactly. See for yourself why we call the new Gillette stainless blade incomparable. A dispenser of six incomparable Gillette stainless blades costs just 89 cents, the lowest price per blade. Drysdale uh, on the bases, taking his time, uh, naturally getting ready now to pitch to the Yankees in the third inning. And the Dodgers have one run on two hits and no errors. The Yankees have no runs on one hit and no errors through the first two innings of play here at Dodger Stadium.
Tony Kubek, the shortstop for New York, will lead off for them in the third inning. First time he batted, he bounced out, Bill Scourin over to Drysdale, who covered the bag. Tony Kubek, a leadoff man with power. Gilliam uh, just inside the bag at third base. Mammel has the only hit off Drysdale so far. Here's a pitch. It's a curve across on Tony's strike called. Wind up by Don, and the pitch is on the way. He swings as a foul ball out of play. Strike two, the count on Kubak. Yogi Berra coaching at first base for New York. Frank Grissetti is the third base coach. Shelly celebrated his birthday yesterday. Now the motion, here it comes. A bounding ball is short. To the right goes Wills. He can't handle it. It's down under his glove and on into left field. Kubek makes a turn and holds on at first base. The ball hit to the right of Mari Wills. He couldn't get over. He got under his glove. And will be charged as an error. An error charged to Mari Wills, allowing Kubek to reach first base safely. Here's Bobby Richardson. Bobby fouled a scour his first time up. Set by Drysdale, the pitch is outside for a ball. Ball one. Bobby has been a leadoff man himself, but he's an ideal number two hitter. Bunt, hit and run. So he gets the wood on the ball. Throw the first, and Kubek is picked off. Scott running it back towards second base. Now tosses to Will. And Kubek is back. First base by Drysdale who crossed the scour and ran him over towards second and then threw the shortstop wheels to put the tag on him. Richardson waiting. Pitch is swung on and fouled out of play back on the screen. That's the count. Dodgers lead the Yankees in the third inning. One to nothing. Here's a pitch. He swings and fouls it off. Went out of the mid of Rose Bar, the catcher. One ball, two strike count on Bobby Richardson. Just since the center field here in Dodgers Stadium is 4 10. 390 up the alley and then uh, 380 and down the line. Much shorter than that. Here's the pitch. A down in too tight. At the point of the shoulder, backed him off. 2-2. 330 down each line here. Short fence for a while. Out in the outfield, the fence is 10 feet high. Richardson waits. Here it comes. He takes the ball outside. That was the one. Drysdale trying to find that outside corner and chip it off. Bobby was almost tempted on it, too. He's setting himself up in pretty good shape, too, Ernie, as he comes in with that fastball high and tight, pushes him away, and then takes a shot at that outside corner. No way in the world you can hit that ball unless you've got about a 49-inch bat. Now the windup and the pitch. Swung on and popped in the air. Open here first. Cowron calling for it and makes the catch right in front of Kuzuski. Richardson out on the pop line. Tom Trash will be the batter. Trash struck. 
struck out his first time. But he faced Drysdale. It's one to nothing Dodgers over the Yankees. The Yanks at bat in the third. They've got two down and the base is empty. It's a curve outside. He ran up as if he might bump, but he didn't offer on it. Gilliam was charging him from third base. Skies have uh, clouded over a little bit now here in Los Angeles. Now the wind up and the pitch on the way. Swung on the bounding ball to first. Cowan has it. Will make the play unassisted. And then retires the Yankees in the third. No runs, no hits, one error, nobody left. At the end of two and one half innings, Dodgers won and the Yankees nothing. Pete Boy has really been moving in fast in third to guard against the good bunters in that Dodger lineup. And the other day we recorded Fleet talking with Mel Allen. Let's play it now. Say, Fleet, I'm told you're very particular about the kind of shave you get. True? It sure is, Mel. And for smoothness, for comfort, I can count on every time. It's a Gillette shave for me. That's telling them, Fleet. And all Gillette shave is the smooth, easy shave, the refreshing shave. Apply Gillette Foaming Instant Lather Shave Cream to super soak your beard and keep it softened right down through your last easy stroke. And every stroke is easy with a streamlined, slim, adjustable razor. You turn its exclusive nine-position micrometer dial to the exact blade setting for your skin and beard. And right now, you can get everything you need for an all-Gillette shave and save 50 cents. It's Gillette's World Series Special, Foamy, Regular, or Menthol, and the slim adjustable razor with super blue blades, all for only a dollar seventy-nine. That's a two twenty-nine value, so you save fifty cents. Jim Gilliam batting left-handed, facing the Yankee right-handed Jim Bowden. Dodgers at bat of the third, and the Dodgers lead the Yankees one to nothing. Gilliam backs off from a high inside pitch. Ball one. Bowden has been uh, high, wild quite a bit here in the early innings. Got two wild pitches charged against him. There's a strike. He got that one over on the outside corner, one and one. The first wild pitch led to the scoring of the run. After Gilliam walked, he went to second on the wild pitch and came home on a single by Tommy Davis. One and one, the count on Gilliam. The pitch on the way. There's a foul ball out of play. Back at third base in the seats. One and two. It's the count on Jim Gilliam. Wind up by Bowden, he delivers a foul ball hit on the ground back to the screen. Jim Gilliam, sometimes called Junior, but right now he and Padres are the veterans on the Dodger Ball Club. Here's a one-two delivery. Swung on a bounding ball to the glove of Bowden. He grabs it and throws the first. He was grabbing his cap and almost threw the ball in the cap at the same time. Bernie's had a problem with his cap, uh, like Al Downing, uh, the little left-hander, when he breaks off that real good overhanded curveball, his cap is flying off, and it looked like that time. It was a little undecided where to throw the cap of the baseball over there. I've seen that happen. I saw play the plate one day where the catcher the glove away and uh, just kept his mask on about the ball. It can happen. Well, uh, Jim made the play. That's what counts. Here's Willie Davis batting now, the left-hand hitter. He takes the ball down low and a little bit inside. I feel deep on this fellow. The third baseman, Boyer, though, is in on the grass and wide of the bag at third. Willie Davis waits. Here it comes. He swings and there's a drive it to Mountain and the, he tosses the first. So they're two down. 
the line draft about. He just threw the first base, to, I guess, as an automatic reaction. So it'll be a line out to the pitcher if you're keeping score. Here's Tommy Davis now, the right-handed batting left fielder and the leading hitter in the series. First time in the first inning, he drove home the game's only run. The single is the ball up high. Dodgers lead the Yanks in the third. It's one to nothing. Favor of Los Angeles. It's the windup. The pitch on the way. It gets an outside corner. A good curveball. One and one. Jim Bowden, the Yankee right-hander, pitching to Tommy Davis. Up too high. Two on the count. Two Dodger hits, one in each inning. Tommy Davis had that RBI single in the first, and Scour had a leadoff single in the second. Yankees have one hit off drives they play. One single by Mickey Mantle. Davis takes a strike. Leather high on the outside corner. The fastball busted in there that time. 2-2 two, two, the count on him. Outfield deep and around toward left. The infield back now all the way. Here's the pitch. He cuts and misses. Struck him out, and the inning is over. The second strikeout for Bowden. Nothing across for the Dodgers. And at the end of three, Dodgers won, Yankees nothing. Well, here's the great value, fans. A 50-cent saving with Gillette World Series Special. For only $1.79, you get the streamlined Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor with Super Blue Blades, usually $1.50. And a 79-step can of extra-rich Gillette Foamy Instant Lather Shave Cream, regular or menthol. That adds up to $2.29, but now it's yours for only $1.79 as a Gillette World Series Special. What a value. You save 50 cents while they last. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. This is WGY Schenectady. A baseball star is someone with that certain something that wins ball games. If you want to be the star attraction in your home, keep plenty of Saratoga ginger ale on hand and serve it often. When you're tense and need relaxing or a friend call and you all get to feel thirsty, take a refreshing, relaxing, thirst-quenching drink of Saratoga ginger ale. It's a combination of pure, clear waters and imported Jamaican gingers with a just-right touch of carbonation that makes a rich, zesty ginger ale unequal for taste and flavor. Now on special sale at your favorite store. Dodgers have one run, two hits, and one error. The Yankees have no runs on one hit and no errors. It's the fourth inning at Dodgers Stadium. Drysdale, the big right hander, ready to go into action. Double pumps on Mantle. Now here's the pitch. Batting left handed, the swings and misses that first offering. The attendance today at Dodger Stadium, 55,912. Mantle takes a curve over just above the knees. Strike two on Nick. Outfield swung around deep to right on the Yankee slugger. He takes a strike. A curveball over struck him out. Number four in strikeout for Drysdale. He struck out uh, men in the first, second, and fourth innings. And Joe Pepitone steps up. Joe was hit by a pitch ball from Drysdale in the second inning. His only time up in this game. Boy from Brooklyn, Joe Pepitone. 
Picks a curveball in the close. Ball one. Even though he lived in Brooklyn, Joe was a Yankee rooter, and he said it's not too easy over there. The pitch he swung on and popped in the air to short right. Krasuski, the second baseman, going back. He's under it now. At plenty of room, makes the catch. And Epitone is out on the top up the second. Brings the bat Elston Howard with two down for the Yankees, and the base is empty. Howard struck out the first time he batted up, was back on the second. The Dodgers won, and the Yanks nothing. It's the fourth at Dodger Stadium. Outfield straight away on him. Here's the pitch. It's a strike. Drysdale hitting those corners now with regularity. Tough sidearm curveball just above the knees. Got the corner. Here it comes. A strike ball. Same Drysdale is pitching tough. Here's the windup by Don. He delivers. Half of the fourth inning, the Dodgers won the Yankees nothing. Now, Tommy Davis has knocked in the only Dodger run so far. And just the other day, Ben Scully reported Tommy's views after a game. Tom, you keep in condition all year round. Does that go for your face, too? You bet, Ben. And I do it very easy with a clean, confession, Gillette shave. Men by the millions agree with Tommy. How can you beat the refreshment of an all Gillette shave? And here's your opportunity to try to the savings of 50 cents. With the Gillette World Series Special, you get the slim adjustable razor with super blue blades, plus foamy instant lather shave cream, a $2.29 value for only $1.79. See how foamy super soaks your whiskers, keeps them that way from first easy stroke to last. And what easy shave do you get with a slim adjustable razor? It has Gillette's exclusive blade-setting dial on the handle. You choose the number from 1 to 9 that suits your combination of skin and beard exactly. Remember, the slim, adjustable razor with super blue blades, plus foamy, regular, or menthol, yours right now for only $1.79 as a Gillette World Series special. You save 50 cents. Dodgers lead one to nothing. Last half of the fourth. Here's Ron Fairley who's playing right field, a left-hand batter to face Jim Bowden. He takes a curve in too close. Ball one on Ron. Ron, the first time up, fouled out to Yankee catcher Elston Howard. Worked the University of Southern California. Ron Fairley must be a great source of satisfaction to his dad, who was a minor league ball player for many years. 13 of them to see his son in the World Series. There's a fastball up high. 2-0 to count. It's the ball up high again. 3-0. Dodgers scored in the first inning a walk to Gilliam, a wild pitch, sent him to second. And then Tommy Davis, with two out, drove him home. It's the only score of the game here in game number three of the 1963 World Series. We're happy to send it to you on the NBC radio network. Barely waiting, and the pitch is blown away. He walked in. The third walk issued by Jim Bowden. Here's Bill Scourin, the moose. Well, the single is only time at that. He now has five hits in the series. He's one behind his teammate, Tommy Davis. Boyan tied at third base. Capitone holding on the back with the runner fairly. 
A pitch out, but nothing happened. Ball one. Ralph Carey and Hal Rennett have begun to heat up in the Yankee bullpen back in the right field sector. Now the set by Bowden, he pitches, is a foul ball back to the screen. One and one, that's the count on Scourin. Two by the Dodgers and one by the Yankees. And all three have been singles. A ball in too tight. Backed him off with a fastball right at the point of the shoulder. Scarron stands deep, likes to step into the pitch. and fouls it off to right. Up in the seats. Guys like Scar and Ernie or a Clemente or a Yogi, uh, you just can't ever feel like you're ahead of them because you might try to waste the pitch and they'll just cut down on and drill it. Uh, there really is no strike zone for these fellas. Anytime the pitcher throws the ball, they feel they have a right to hit it and they do a pretty good job of doing just that. Now, Bill waiting on the next one. It's a 2-2 two -two count on him. Ron Fairley takes his lead at first base. Pepitone holding on the bag with him, and uh, there's a throw over by Bouton to keep him close. Dodgers won. Yankees nothing. It's the fourth inning. The Dodgers batting with a man on. And nobody out. There's a ground ball to third. Knocked down by Boy. A pickup throw to Richardson for one. Really to first. Not in time. Close at first base. And a great pivot by Richardson. Almost got a double play. A fine play by Boyer, too, to knock that ball down and get one. It's a force out in second. Fairly cut down. Boyer to Richardson for the out. They got the front man. And Scourd is safe at first base. He made that play with his bare hand. I didn't see how he could make his actor to throw as he did. He's still uh, kind of trying to get the sting out of there. Boyer knocked that ball down with his bare hand, the one hopper. A time call by Pepitone, probably to uh, allow Pete to get a little more unstinging time, I guess you call it. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> it took inventory. Let's see. I came here with ten fingers. <laughs> Here's Rosebar up now. He bounced to second baseman Richardson his only time at bat. Left hand about he catches the infield and double play depth on him. Pepitone will not hold on the bag with Scourney. He'll be play behind him. There's a strike over the knees. Strike called on Roseboro. One to nothing. The Dodgers lead the Yankees. Game number three of the 1963 World Series. At Dodgers Stadium, the first game of the series here at Dodgers Stadium. Roseboro waiting. There's a throw to first over to Pepitone from Bowden. And Scourin got back in plenty of time. Set the pitch, Roseboro takes the ball outside. One and one. Roseboro broke into baseball as a catcher, outfielder, and infielder. Back in 52 in the Dodgers system. This is the seventh year with a major league club. The one one pitch on the way. He swings too early on a changeup curve. One and two, the count on him. Boyer very wide of the bag at third. Boyer moves around a lot to play the hitters. Set 
Check of the sign by right hand of Bowden, and about the time he dreaded the pitch, time is called by plate umpire Larry Neff. Bowden went through with the pitch anyway. It's not counting, however. One of the interesting things when that happens, Ernie, is that regardless of the pitch that you call, for example, if you call for a curveball, that pitcher will do all he can not to throw the curveball. <laughs> let up on it, you know, not to give away any secrets. Now, Rose Barr awaiting it's a one-two count on him. Swung on, there's a fly ball into left center field. Trash is coming over. He has the room, makes the catch. Rose Barr is out. And returning to first is Scourin. The batter will be Trzuski, the second baseman who fanned his first trip. Slender right-hand batter, Dick Trzuski. The Dodgers got a run in the opening inning on a walk to Gilliam, a wild pitch, and a single by Tommy Davis, and they lead one to nothing here in the fourth. Here's a fastball, backed him away. Ball one. Bowden keeps losing his hat, and I can't help but I have to say it. It's always those crew cut guys losing that. You never saw a ball headed pitcher lose his hat, did you? Well, they take it on, don't they? Yes, you? sir. A big thumbtack and take it on. Those crew cut guys don't they always manage to lose it. Ball on, that's the count on Krasuski. Here's the shot in the pitch. He swings the fly ball to straight away center. Not deep. Mantle is under it. Waiting, waiting. He makes the catch to the side of the tire. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left. And at the end of four full innings, the Dodgers won the next nothing. Well, John Roseborough has been doing a great job handling this Dodger pitching staff throughout the series. We tape recorded a chat Ben Scully had with John. Here it is. Tell me, John, have you tried the new Gillette stainless blade? You bet I have, Ben, and I still find it hard to believe any blade could give you such a comfortable shave. So many of them, too. The Gillette stainless is really tops. That, in effect, is what men are saying about the new Gillette stainless blade, because on any steel, it's the edge that counts, and Gillette has the sharpest, easiest shaving edges in the world. One blade will prove to you what these... Superb mirror finish edges on long-lasting stainless steel can mean in comfort and convenience. The first shave, smooth, easy, almost beyond belief. With more just like it in every blade. But beyond that, blade after blade, you'll find unequaled uniformity. Get the dispenser of six incomparable Gillette stainless blades for 89 cents. The lowest price per blade. Dodgers going into inning number five at Dodger Stadium. Johnny Blanchard of Minneapolis, Minnesota will lead off. Left-hand batting outfielder who also does a lot of catching for the Yankees. He bounced to second his only time at bat. He takes a strike, a fastball in her high from Drysdale. And Drysdale seems to be gaining in effectiveness every inning. The big right hander looks in for his sign. He winds and pitches. It's a slow curve down low. One and one to count. Scheduled to follow Blanchard, or feet boy, and then the pitcher, Jim Bout. He's seven, eight, and nine hitters in this inning for Ralph Hawks Ball Club. Swing a bounding ball up the middle. Mari Wills back a second, grabs it through the first one. Wills came to the right field side of second base to grab that ground ball and throw out Johnny Blanchard. Krasuski, the second baseman, had pulled over toward first, so Mari was playing him more or less up the middle, but he came to the right field side of second to grab the grounder and make the play. Cleet Boyer will be the batter. Cleet was issued an intentional pass in the second inning below the bases. He tries to bunt. It's in there for a strike.
outfield plays for you straight away. The infield back now. Wind up by Trysdale. The pitch is a ball outside. One and one. One out. Nobody on. The Dodgers lead the Yankees in the fifth inning. One to nothing. Here it comes. He takes the ball wide. Sidearm fastball. Two and one. That's the count. On Cleet Boyan. Cleet has one hit in the series so far. One free. Drysdale picking up his sign, ready to go to work again. He pitches. Here's a ground ball to short. Wills goes to the glove side. Has it. Throw the first. He's out. So there are two Yankees out in the fifth inning. And Fountain will be the batter. New Yorker. Chrysler 64. Clean. Crisp. Handsome. Engineered better, back better than any car in its class. Move up to Chrysler 64. Engineered better. Back better than any car in its class. Move up. Chuck Chrysler 64. See your local Chrysler dealer today. Well, at the end of four and a half innings, the Dodgers one run, two hits, and one error. The Yankees no runs, one hit, and no errors. And now for the second half of the game. I'll pleasure you to bring in Joe Garagiola. Thank you very much, Ernie. It'll be Don Drysdale to lead it off against Fountain. Uh, curveball outside, and it's ball one. Dodgers one, and the Yankees nothing. Drysdale, who walked his first time up in the second inning, gets back and swing that bat, and he knows what it's for. Fountain delivers, swung on and missed. A curve ball is one ball and one strike. Bolton, I guess, can best be compared to, as far as National League fans are concerned, to Juan Marichal. Gives you a lot of motion, a lot of fingernails, kneecaps, elbows to hit at, and comes directly overhanded with that curve ball. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch outside. Two balls and one strike. They're working on drives there like he's a good hitter. 
And he can whack for a pitcher. A lot of room in right center field. The man was deep a little bit towards left center. Tresh is deep in left field. Blanchard, very normal in right field. Two balls and one strike to count. Bouton ready, the pitch. Low. And it's ball three. Three balls and one strike. Bouton has walked three. He walked Gilliam, who came around to score. Walked Drysdale and walked Fairley. And now it's three balls, one strike. Nobody out. We're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Dodgers are leading one to nothing. Here's the three-one pitch. Ball four. He walked him. Man, and there's nothing that'll spin that manager around like a yo-yo and to see his man walk the opposing pitcher. It'll just make him sit on that bench, moan and groan. Waller Austin had quite a talk before he came up to hit, giving him all the instructions that he might want to give him, not even relying on any signs from Reeser. Reeser, at this point, coaching the third, will relay the signs to Don Drysdale as to what's happening. Boyer is in close, right in on top of him. Drysdale taking a little bit of time as he puts his jacket on. Time was called. Boyer's in about five steps on the grass. Pepitone has to hold close. The infield. Richardson shades towards the back at first base. Quebec near the back at second. Here's the pitch. Maury Will swings and fouls one off, trying to hit one pass. Cleve Boyer. Boyer right in on top of him. And Will's trying to slash one by him. Well, oh, that's about the time you want to put shin guards on when you're a third baseman. One strike, no balls. Maury Wills waves that bat. Boyer's still in close. Drysdale, a leadoff first. Bouton at the belt. Here's the pitch. Wills is going to bunny. Pops it in the air. And Elston Howard makes the play. And Wills is out. Drysdale holds at first base. The ball went straight up. It's Wills tried to butt one. So there's one out. Jim Gilliam is, out, is up with Drysdale at first base. One to nothing. The Dodgers have made one run on two hits. The Yankees, no runs. They've only made one hit. Third game of the 1963 World Series from Dodger Stadium. Brought to you on the NBC Radio Network. Gilliam waits the pitch by Bouton. Starts the swing, holds up. It goes low, and it's ball one. Boyer in close once again. Gilliam, a guy who can handle that bat. Doesn't strike out much at all. Always gets a piece of that ball. Pepitone playing behind the base runner. Drives Dale at first. Here's the pitch. Way high and outside a fastball. It's two balls and no strikes. Bouton's cap comes off again. That's got to be a World Series record. Most times cap lost during the third game. New baseball in play. Jim Bouton, kind of a fidgety sort of guy, always kind of grabbing at the top of his uniform, his cap, like he may have gotten the wrong one off the rack. Two balls, no strikes, ready now. Drysdale leads off the pitch, swung on, hot smash, Pepitone has it to Quebec at second, one out, back to first. It is a double play, a 3-6-3 three, three from Pepitone to Quebec, back to Pepitone. And that ends the inning for the Dodgers. Three up and three down. And so at the end of the fifth inning, the score is Los Angeles one, the Yankees nothing. The 1964 Chrysler, New York. Crisp, clean, handsome. There's a 413 cubic inch V8. There's a lot of room. And there's a lot of luxury. Chrysler 64. Backed by 40 years of engineering leadership. It's a lot of car. And a lot of smart people are making the move to Chrysler 64. See your dealer and let him tell you about it. 1964 Chrysler. Engineered better. Car in its class. Move.
move up to Chrysler 64. See your local Chrysler dealer today. Don Drysdale just coming out of the uh, Dodger dugout. He's taking plenty of time. He was on and the play was made. One to nothing. The Dodgers scored their run in the first inning the way they've been doing it all year, boy. I tell you, a walk, a base on balls, a wild pitch, hurricane, broken bat, and one run is in. They got a walk, Gilliam, and then he went to second on a wild pitch, and Tommy Davis, a hot shot off Bobby Richardson's foot in the right field, and Gilliam came around to score. And just like they tell the pitchers all year long, the players apparently said to Drysdale, there's your lead, hold it. And that's been it, one to nothing. As we go into the top half of the sixth inning, one run, two hits, one error for the Dodgers. That's the line score so far. The Yankees, no runs, one hit, no errors. And that one hit was a bunt single by Mantle. Drysdale has retired ten men in a row. The streak was started with the strikeout of Bob in the second. Kubek was safe on an air to open the third, but then Drysdale picked him off, and it's been one, two, three. Six strikeouts for the big right-hander. Drysdale against Kubek. Roseboro flashes the sign, and here comes Drysdale. Swung on, fly ball, right field, over his fairly. Can he get it? He does not. It drops for a base hit. Kubek is on with the single. Down near the line. And Kubek is on with a single. It brings up Bobby Richardson. Third game of this 1963 World Series from Dodger Stadium on the NBC Radio Network. All the action. And some tremendous pitching in this series. Here is Bobby Richardson now, one to nothing. Dodgers leading. Richardson, who can handle that bat. Gilliam in a couple steps at third. Drysdale at the belt, checks Kubek, and here's the pitch. Pitch out. They want to see what was going on. No play on. A lot of times the catcher will do that to let the infield know, especially when you got a guy like Richardson who can play hit and run. And with Kubek on, you can play run and bunt. Start him and let your man bunt the ball if he wants to. It's a good ball. It's a bad one. Take it. Drysdale ready. Kubek leads. Here's the pitch. Richardson bunts it and bunts it foul. So it's one ball and one strike. Richie takes a look now at the Crow. Frank Rossetti at third. One ball, one strike. Richardson does not strike out a lot. Hit and run play is usually a defensive play more than an offensive play. Stay away from that double play to keep your inning going. It's not to make the big inning, but to keep you from the double play, which will wreck it for you. One ball, one strike. Kubek, a good lead. Richardson bunts it, bunts it down the first baseline. Drysdale has it. His only play is the first base. Krasuski covers the sacrifice. is executed by the Yankees with Kubek taking second. Bobby Richardson, a perfect bunt. Drysdale to Krasuski. Retires Richardson with Kubek moving on over to second base. And Tresh and Mantle have a chance to drive him in. One to nothing. The Dodgers are leading. We're in the top half of the sixth inning. The giant run is on at second base. Tony Kubek. Beautiful bunt by Bobby Richardson. Fresh struck out and bounced out. Drysdale gets his signs from his catcher, Roseboro. Kubek, a lead off second base. Here's the pitch. Swung on a bouncing ball. Trzuski at second has it. His plays at first base. In time with Kubek moving on over to third. On the first pitch, Fresh. In a ground ball to the second baseman, Krasuski. So there are two outs, and it brings up Mickey Mantle. Mantle bunted over the head of Jim Gilliam. Back in the second inning for the first Yankee hit. Kubek, who is on at third base, has the other Yankee hit. Don Drysdale gets his sign. Checks Kubek, and here's the pitch to Mantle. Swung on and missed strike one. A fastball. Don Drysdale just literally challenged Mantle. Boy, scouting reports are valuable, no doubt about it. 
But when you watch this Koufax or Drysdale pitch, it goes back to good old country hardball, rear back and fire. Drysdale ready once again. Mantle awaits. Here's the pitch. Swung on. Bouncing ball foul. Yogi Berra makes a nice play. Yo, very popular, of course. Why not? Drysdale taking plenty of time. He's got Mantle in the hole. Two strikes. There are two outs. Check Skubek. He's ready. Here's the pitch. Did he swing? No. Held up. Says Larry Knapp. Drysdale started towards the Dodger dugout. And it's in Roseboro. A high fastball. Man, you could hear that thing pop into Roseboro's glove from up here. Roseboro's the only catcher, I believe, in the National League or any in the Major Leagues who can break in a glove in four innings with any of three pitchers. Crosetti is checking with him. They're claiming spitball. Crosetti is claiming spitball, and now Larry Knapp goes out to look at it. And Drysdale with the rubbing effect, and now Knapp goes out to talk to him. And he's claiming spitball is what Crosetti was claiming, and if nothing else, could be a little psychological warfare. Brown booze a bit. Well, I know there's one pitch in the American League. Jim Gentile says, I don't know if he throws a spitball, but every time I bat against him, my bat gets warped. <laughs> Two strikes, one ball. We're set now. Drysdale against Mantle, the pitch. Strike three. Mantle is called out of strikes. At MP inning, no runs, one hit, no errors. One man was left on base, and so at the end of five and a half innings, the score is Dodgers one, Yankees nothing. Hey, what a beautiful day. So let's take a ride in a beautiful car. The 64 Chrysler 300. Clean, crisp, handsome. Backed by 40 years of engineering leadership. Engineered better. Backed better. Than any car in its class. Bucket seats are standard. The one on the passenger side reclines. A lot of smart people are moving up to Chrysler. How about you? Move up to Chrysler 64. See your local Chrysler dealer today. Willie Davis to lead it off here. Boy, Ernie, one of the great spitball stories. They had a fellow pitching against the Cardinals one day, and he told Musial about it. And the great hitter that Stan the Man is, he said, Well, I guess I'll just have to hit it on the dry side. <laughs> That's pretty good confidence. Yes, sir. <laughs> Willie Davis against Jim Bowden. Willie Davis, Tom Davis, Ron Fairley. Here's a pitch by Bowden. Ah, and it's ball one. Willie Davis lined to right and lined right back to Bowden. He is 0 for 2. Boyer shortens up to protect against the ball. It might be squibbed off the end of the bat. Infield is swung around towards the right side. Willie Davis, the left hand hitter, waits. Inside. And it's ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Nobody out. Bottom half of the sixth inning. Tremendous crowd here at Dodger Stadium, and you're listening to the third game on the NBC Radio Network. The pitch fouled right back here, and it's two balls and one strike. Pete Reeser coaching at third base for the Dodgers, Joe Becker. Both from St. Louis, Missouri. Coaching for the Dodgers. Here's the pitch. Swung on and foul back. A high fastball. 
Billy looked like he might like to order one like that right back. Some hitters, when they get a pitch, they think they should hit and they foul it off. Well, they have some conversation with themselves. Hank Sauer used to be a great one. Pitch like that, you ought to hit it. Well, I tried to hit it. Now, you didn't get a good cut. Now, I'll try to get a better cut. They just keep talking to themselves. It's a great thing about catching. You get to hear all those conversations. And the helpful suggestions that they give umpires. Willie Davis taking plenty of time for some reason, just backing in and out of the box. Can't find the right spot. And Boughton just waiting for him. Two balls and two strikes to count. Now we're ready, and here's the 2-2 pitch. High curveball. It's ball three. Boughton's curveball is the overhanded type, the kind when we were kids we used to call it drop. It just rolls right straight down. Three balls, two strikes. Willie Davis waits. Here's the pitch by Boughton. Swung on and missed. He struck him out. That's the third strikeout for Jim Boughton. Drysdale has struck out seven. Here is Tommy Davis. In the first inning, it was Tommy Davis who got the base hit that drove in the only run. Jim Gilliam, who was, had walked and was on at second base as a result of a wild pitch, scored on the hot shot hit by Davis off the glove of Richardson. Swung on and foul back strike one. The Yankee defense really swung towards the left side for Tommy Davis, the right-handed hitter. Boyer behind the back. Kubek protects the hole between short and third. Richardson, two steps on the outfield grass near the back. Pepitone on normal first base. Tresh in left field deep. Mantle in left center. Blanchard normal in right. Swung on. Bouncing ball to Kubek. The shortstop, the big hop. He's got it to throw in time. Tommy Davis bounces out. Kubek to Pepitone and brings up Ron Fairley. Fairley, a left-handed hitter with a real good stroke. Nice, smooth, fluid swing. Doesn't overswing, just gets that bat on the ball. Hits to all fields. Takes a curveball low and it's ball one. He keeps the defense honest. Everybody is pretty much straight away. Bowden, who is kind of the pitcher's answer to Colavito, does a lot of calisthenics on the mound. Low. And it's ball two. Bowden now turns his back to Ron Fairley and rubs up that baseball. He's one of those busy pitchers. He stays busy between pitches. Which is in contrast to the great hitter Henry Aaron, who Robin Roberts says sleeps between pitches. Two balls, no strikes. The pitch by Bouton. Bounces, and Elston Howard makes a nice play. He digs that one out. It goes to three balls and no strikes. You know, you're really lucky, Ernie, when you catch a ball like that, because that bounces about eight feet in front of the plate, and when you do realize that you've caught it, you really try to act nonchalant <laughs> like, oh, boy, look at me. I've been doing it all my life. Give it the old howdy-do, eh? <laughs> yeah. Three balls, no strikes. The pitch by Bowden. It's high, ball four, and Fairley draws the base on balls, and that's the fifth base on balls given up by Bowden, and it brings up Muscara. They're not booze that you hear. It's a moose call that they get most. Ron Fairley on at uh, first base. Scour in that batter's box. Moose had a base hit in the second inning. Hit into a force play. Fine play by Boyer in the fourth. Mountain checks the runner. Here's the pitch. Swung on. Tap. Foul. Elston Howard got on it right now. The infield here at Dodger Stadium is very hard. On the dirt part, in front of home plate, it's very hard. But they've re it directly in front of home plate. It's kind of soft. 
talking to some of the Dodger players. It's much softer than it was most of the summer. Any ball that hits in that grass park will be slowed up. Any fun attempt, it will grab it. Al Renneth begins to throw in the Yankee bullpen. One strike to count. Scourin waits the pitch. It's knocked down nicely by Elston Howard. A curveball stayed in the dirt. And it's one ball and one strike. Howard did a real good job to block that curveball. Anytime you can keep that ball in front of you, you'll keep that base runner from advancing. Boy, some of these curveballs get down, and you got to be a half gopher to get them. One ball, one strike. Two outs, one nothing. Dodgers lead. Fairly leads off the pitch to Scour and is low, and it's ball two. Two balls and one strike. John Roseboro in the on deck circle. Ron Fairley at first base. He drew a base on balls. There are two outs. Scourin waits. Here's the 2-1 pitch by Bouton. Swung on and foul back. A fastball and the moose had a good cut. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. One to nothing. Dodgers lead the Yankees. This is the third game of the 1963 World Series from Dodger Stadium. And you're listening to it on the NBC Radio Network. the top network for sports. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Ron Fairley getting a good lead at first base. Bouton delivers inside. Howard makes a throw to first base. Now he fires one back to Bouton. And it's a full count. Bouton wanted a decision on that 2-2 because he didn't want to give up those extra five steps that Ron Fairley will get now that the count is run to three and two because with two outs, he'll be off and running. And he can score on that double or that, even that long single. And this is a ballpark, a lot of room. In a big ballpark, you like to get that pitcher decision on 2-2. Scourin is running to three balls and two strikes. Bouton taking plenty of time. Ready, checks Fairley. There he goes. The pitch is swung on. Popped up foul. Out of play. And Fairley will have to come back. Dodgers, one run on two hits. Yankees, no runs, two hits. The old baseball saying that good pitching will stop good hitting. It certainly has been able to do that as far as Dodger pitching is concerned. They have contained these Yankee bats. Boy, they have flooded that bat rack with termites. Three balls, two strikes. Bouton delivers. Scourin swings and misses. He struck him out. Four strikeout for Jim Bouton. That ends the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. And one man was left on base. And so at the end of the sixth inning, the score is Los Angeles one, the Yankees nothing. There are three letters that should be attached to your car. They are CCC, Certified Car Care. That's Chrysler Corporation's economical car health plan designed to prolong the life of your car and keep it running like clockwork. Periodic checkups by specially trained men using Mopar and Chrysler parts. All Chrysler Plymouth and Dodge dealers have it. Remember CCC, Certified Car Care by Chrysler Corporation. Take advantage of it. Don Drysdale takes his warm-up tosses with Lee Walls, and while he does that, we pause 30 seconds for station identification. This is WGY Schenectady. Enjoy the World Series more. Treat yourself to a highball made with Saratoga Vichy. Saratoga Vichy is the perfect mixer, world famous for its distinctive dry taste and long-lasting carbonation. It's not just plain carbonated tap water. No, sir. Saratoga Vichy is a sparkling, fresh spring water. Saratoga Vichy has a hint of alkalinity which, with its carbonation, gives mixed drinks more zip and tang, lets you enjoy the taste tonight, helps you feel better tomorrow, really satisfies a deep thirst. When you shop, always be sure to get Saratoga Vichy by name. Only Saratoga Vichy comes in the green bottle with the bright yellow label. Now on special sale at your favorite store. We struck out seven. 
He has walked one. That was an intentional walk. We're in the top half of the seventh. The pitch by Drysdale outside. And it's ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Drysdale with a fastball, a curveball, and a change of pace. No trick pitches with him. A rare back and fire him guy. A little tougher on the right hand hitters because of his delivery. Epitone waits the pitch by Drysdale. Swung on and tapped foul. So the count, two balls, one strike. Larry Knapp, the plate umpire, takes a look at the baseball. Throws it out of play. Doesn't take much, just a little mark on that ball. Boy, you're bearing down watching that thing. If it's got any kind of a dirt spot on it, here comes a barber pole up at you. 2-1 pitch by Drysdale of Pepitone. Swung on and tapped foul right into the Yankee dugout. Pepitone hit that right off his foot. And boy, those are the kind, and when you get them there, they'll make you late for the dance every time. Pepitone just walking around now. He hit it right off the top of his foot. He's still walking around. I almost feel it breathe when it's inside your shoe like that. It's going boing, boing, boing. He's still walking around. Larry Knapp is asking him how it feels, and Pepitone more than likely told him it hurts. What do you think? <laughs> All set now. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. One nothing. Dodgers lead. Here's the pitch by Drysdale. Swung on. It's a bouncing ball to the second baseman, Trzuski. He's got it over the scour, and there's one out. Dodger outfielders. Outside of the play that Fairley had to make on the base hit by Kubek, they could have just as soon stayed home. All the action has been in the infield. Drysdale with a good sinker ball, and when he's got a good sinker ball, they're going to be hitting over it and topping it and getting that ground ball. And if you're keeping score, you can see he's had one. Elston Howard waits and swings and foul tips one for strike one. Drysdale has struck out seven. Howard was out on strikes in the second, out on strikes in the fourth. Right-hand hitter. Waits for the pitch from Drysdale. Delivered. Swung on. Foul tip right off the mask of Roseboro. Boy, oh boy, those are the kind that get you, too. Kind of make you flunk the cavity test. Ready now. Two-strike pitch. Curveball just misses outside. Larry Knapp behind that plate, right on top of that play. Howard, Elston Howard waiting. Good eye at that plate. Drysdale delivers. Swung on. Bouncing ball right back to Drysdale. He's got it, and there are two outs over to Scarron. A one hop for right back to Drysdale. Made the play, flipped to scour, and there are two outs. Here is John Blanchard. Blanchard bounced out to Trzuski in the second inning and bounced out to Maury Wills in the fifth. Left handed hitter, the pitch by Drysdale. A curve ball, a strike. Drysdale with great control. You've got to go out and beat him. He doesn't walk many. They've overshifted on Blanchard now with Maury Wills a couple steps to the second base side of the bag. Fastball. One and one. Scourin guards the line. Trzuski is the middle man. Two steps on the grass. Maury Wills is shortstop. Two steps on the other side of the bag. Jim Gilliam is the lonesome man on that side of the infield. Here is the 1-1 one, one pitch. Blanchard swings and he misses, and it's strike two. The outfield swung around. Fairly guards the line in right field. Willie Davis is in right center. Tommy Davis way over in left center. Blanchard, good power and a good pull hitter. You know he's up there to try to tie it with one swing of the bat. There are two outs. They just soon give him a single if he wants it. 
swung on a fly ball, short right field. Out goes Trzuski, in comes Fairley, and it, oh, Ron Fairley, Ron Fairley made that play. It did. Willie Davis and Fairley almost collided, and it was Fairley who came in and took it away from Willie Davis, Maury Wills, and Trzuski. And so, at the end of six and a half innings, the score is Los Angeles one and the Yankees nothing. <laughs> Chrysler 64. Your local Chrysler dealer is the man who makes it easy. Right now, he's showing the beautiful new 64 Chrysler. Engineered better, backed better than any car in its class. Backed by 40 years of engineering leadership. Move up to Chrysler 64. Engineered better. Bottom half of the seventh inning, the Los Angeles Dodgers will send up John Roseboro, Dick Krasuski, and Don Drysdale. One to nothing. The Dodgers are leading the Yankees. Third game of the World Series from Dodger Stadium. And you're listening to it on the NBC Radio Network. Ernie Harwell and Joe Garagiola here from Dodger Stadium. Another tremendous pitching duel. Roseboro waits and Bouton delivers. It's a fastball and it's high and it's inside and it's ball one. John Roseboro bounced out in the second inning to Bobby Richardson and then fly to left in the fourth. Left handed hitter waits. It's low and it's ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Roseboro, one of the real durable catchers. His trainer, Doc Anderson, says the toughest catcher he's ever had on a ball club as far as staying in that ball game. Nicknamed Gabby because he doesn't say too much. Says hello, opening day, and goodbye, last day of the season. That's it. Swung on, a little looper, left center field. Could be trouble. It's going to drop for a base hit. John Roseboro hits a blooper in the left center field. He's on with a single. And it brings up Dick Krasuski. Boyer says something to Bouton. One to nothing. They'll be looking for the bunt from Krasuski. Got his sign from Pete Reeser coaching at third base. Krasuski a right-handed batter. Roseboro a good runner is at first base. Pepitone holds him close. Look at Boyer sneaking in. Bouton at the belt. Krasuski's going to punt. Takes it high. Ball one. Pepitone charging down from first base. Boyer charging in. Boyer is in right on top of him. If Krasuski's going to bunt that ball, he's going to have to make Pepitone the first baseman field it. One ball, no strikes. One to nothing. In the bottom half of the seventh inning. Krasuski wants another sign from Pete Reeser. He backs out of the batter's box. Picks up a handful of dirt, which tells Pete Reeser, I don't have the sign. Give me another one. Reeser with a quick flash answers the message, and we're all set. Boyer is still in very close. He's in about ten steps. Bout now goes to the rosin bag. Trzuski can do many things in that batter's box. One to nothing. Dodgers are leading. Roseboro is at first base. All kinds of confusion. Now Pepitone wants to go in. And he wants to talk to the pitcher Bouton. And using the spot like this, he's setting up as to whether he would run in a couple steps and then back off for a possible play. Or if he's going to go in all the way and forget any pickoff plays. Boyer is still in. He wants to get that bunt. Bouton is ready. Trzuski waits. Here's the pitch. He's swinging away. Bouncing ball. Pass Boyer. In the left field. Roseboro round second. He's sticking for third. The throw goes into third base. It is not in time. 
out in time. And Roseboro is on at third, Krasuski on at second base. The Dodgers turning it wide open. Born on a call with full steam ahead. Switched off. And Krasuski singles past Boyer and goes to second base on the throw as John Roseboro with good speed, able to go from first to third on the single to left. Here is Don Drysdale. Infield is in. Roseboro at third. Krasuski at second. The pitch to Drysdale. Starts to swing. Holds up the curveball. Catches the corner. Strike one. Krasuski, who can do many things in that batter's box. There was a lot of confusion with switching signs. Asked for another one. Reeser gave it to him, and they switched off, and he came through for manager Walter Alston as he singled past Boyer, who was in looking for the bunt, setting up a possible big inning for the Dodgers. Roseboro at third. Krasuski at second. One strike to count on Drysdale. Nobody out. Bottom half of the seventh inning. Jim Fountain gets his sign. Here is the pitch to Drysdale. Swung on a foul ball. Out of play. Right side. Nobody can get this one. And it's two strikes. Jim Fountain has to let out a notch. He's got to get the strike out here. And he knows it. And it gives Hauk a chance to maybe put Wills on. Go to Gilliam. A lot of wheels spinning here at Dodger Stadium. Making hitters ahead. Here's the two-strike pitch to Drysdale. Low, ball one. Third game. Drysdale against Fountain. It's Drysdale who's leading one to nothing with Roseboro at third base. Trzuski at second base. From Dodger Stadium, and you're with us on the NBC Radio Network. Two strikes, one ball. Nobody out. Drysdale waiting. Out and taking plenty of time. He's in a jam. Nobody has to tell him that. He's ready now. And here's the pitch by Bouton. Bouncing ball. Richardson, a nice play. Fakes the throw to plate. Throws the first. And now they've got Krasuski trapped between second and third. Pepitoff throws to Kubek. Kubek racing Krasuski near third. And now they've got Roseboro and Krasuski at third base. They tag Krasuski. And Krasuski is out. The play. A bouncing ball by Drysdale. Richardson. Thought there would be a play at the plate. Roseboro did not come in, and Richardson held on to the ball through the first base to retire Drysdale. Pepitone looked up, and here was Krasuski between second and third. Pepitone ran towards Krasuski and then threw to Kubek at second base behind Krasuski because Roseboro was on at third base, so they were going to run him to the bag already occupied. And as Kubek Ran Krasuski to third. Roseboro stayed there. And Kubek tagged Krasuski and Roseboro and Tom Gorman, the third base umpire, called Krasuski out. And boy, that's about as involved double play as you want to see. Four to three to six. And so now there are two outs. Maury Wills the hitter. Roseboro's on third. Bouton wants to talk to Pepitone. He's about as much as saying. Who's on base and how many outs and where are we? Joe, I noticed uh, Kubek taking no chances. He's tagging both of them right there on the back. Ernie, I saw Stan Musial one day tagged the very umpire involved. He tagged two base runners, a third baseman, and the umpire and said, somebody's out. <laughs> Maury Wills in that batter's box. Two men out. Roseboro at third to pitch by Fountain. They swung on. It's a bouncy ball to Richardson. Richardson has it over the first. The inning is over. One man was left on base, and so at the end of the seventh inning, the score is Los Angeles one, the Yankees nothing. Move up to Chrysler 64. 
Chrysler 64. Engineered better, backed better than any car in its class. Backed by 40 years of engineering leadership. See your local Chrysler dealer. Move up to Chrysler 64. Built to last longer. Built to run stronger. Move up to Chrysler 64. Well, the crowd here at Dodger Stadium still buzzing over that play. I tell you, boy, it was a it looked like a portion out of the Keystone Tops for a while there, Ernie. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Everybody moving. And it's Cleet Boyer to lead it off here now against Don Drysdale. The first pitch is swung on and foul back, and it's strike one. like that could give a big lift though to the Yankees because they were facing the big inning on the part of Los Angeles. Sometimes that'll just turn it around for a ball club. We'll wait and see. Here's the pitch. It's a strike call and tries to continues to pour it on. He is rearing back and I mean he is firing. You can hear that ball popping at Roseboro's glove. Like Saturday morning at the lumber yard. Just stack that lumber. Strike three. Cleet Boyer called down on strikes. That's eight strikeouts for Drysdale. Padres had four strikeouts. And of course, in that first game, Sandy Kopax broke Carl Erskine's record 15. Here is Yogi Berra as a pinch hitter. Now you can bet this is some kind of a record for Yogi. Most 75th game. Probably most times not listening to a World Series on radio. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled back. Yogi not waiting for anything. 75th World Series game. Boy, there are a lot of ball players don't get in 75 exhibition games, much less World Series games. He's up to now against Rysdale with one out. Yankees trail one to nothing. Yankees have made only two hits. The Dodgers have made four. Drysdale, the right-hander is ready, pitches outside. One ball and one strike. Yogi Berra. Boy, they might just, just as well get the same cab for guys like Yogi, Spawn, and Musial when they can put him in the Hall of Fame. Outside. It's ball two. Two balls and one strike. Drysdale hasn't walked the one man. That was intentional. Mr. Boyer back in his second inning. It's been the Yankee attack so far. A one single by Mantle. Pepitone was hit by a pitch ball, so they had base runners at first and second, but then Howard struck out. Blanchard bounced out. And that's when Drysdale walked Boyer intentionally to load him up and then ended the inning by striking out Bouton. That's been the whole Yankee attack so far. Two balls, one strike. Barrow waits. The pitch by Drysdale. Way inside. A let up. Gets by Roseboro. And it's three balls and one strike. Dodgers scored their run in the first. A walk to Gilliam. A wild pitch. And then a single by Tommy Davis. And that's been it. One to nothing. Foul back by Yogi. Right on top of us here. Needless to say, you must have heard it. Ron Paranowski and Bob Miller starting to loosen up for the Dodgers in the left field bullpen. Drysdale ready to 3 2 pitch to Yogi Bear on the way. Foul back again. And count remains at three balls, two strikes. The ball was inside. Drysdale really ran back. 
Bouton pitched seven innings, gave up one run. Four hits, struck out four, and walked four. Three two pitch to Barra. Swung on and foul back again. Yogi getting his cuts up there. He's not getting cheated. Drysdale looks down for that sign, shakes off one, another one. Now he's got the one he wants, and here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled back a fastball. You could see that Drysdale was shaking Roseboro around, which is a thing that uh, pitchers do sometimes uh, when they're just going to throw one pitch. The catcher will put down a fastball, they'll shake it off, put down a curve, shake it off, change of pace, shake it off, come right back with the fastball and throw it. It's to try to confuse the hitter. But it's a job with Yogi up there. Waves that bat. Drysdale looking down for that sign. Has it. Yogi waits. The 3-2 pitch. Swung on a line drive. Right field. Ron Fairley coming in and makes the play. Farrah lines to Fairley in right field. Who had him played perfectly. And there are two outs. And it brings up Tony Kubek. That's the first, no, the second foot out for an outfielder. Blanchard into the seventh inning when Fairley made the play on a short pop fly. This ball was well hit, and Fairley had him play perfectly, and Barra is out. So Kubek is up there, and here's the pitch by Drysdale. It's a strike. Right down the middle strike. Drysdale staying ahead of the Yankee hitters. Lubeck waits. Drysdale delivers. Swung on and foul back. Two strikes to count. Two outs. Nobody on. Dodgers one. Yankees nothing. Third game from Dodger Stadium. Capacity crowd here. 55,912. There's a line shot. In the right field, a base hit for Kubek. Hit that ball good. In the right field, he's on with the single. That's his second hit. And it brings up Bobby Richardson. Drysdale got that ball in on Kubek, and Kubek hit a shot in the right field. Richardson fouled out in the first inning, popped up in the third. Sacrificed Bunt in the sixth. Right hand hitter. Kubek, a lead at first. Here's the pitch. Swung on, it's a bouncy ball. Trzuski at second has it. Steps on the back hit to the force out, and that ends the inning. Richardson hits into a force play. No runs, one hit, no errors. One man was left on base, and so at the end of seven and a half innings, the score is Los Angeles one and the Yankees nothing. Today, there is a totally new Imperial. Tomorrow, somebody will ask you if you've seen it. And here in our Imperial showrooms, you will understand why. Enter the quiet world of the incomparable Imperial and learn what a fine car ought to be. The new Imperial is the quietest motor car ever built in this country. And of course, we'll be happy to show you that it's also the most spacious, the best performing, and the most beautiful car in America today. The new 1964 Imperial. Now I'm proud to display at your neighborhood Imperial dealers. It's the freshest look of luxury you'll see this year. Drive it for a totally new experience. The incomparable Imperial. Your next choice in luxury cars. Now at your local Imperial dealer. Inning and Hal Renniff is a new Yankee pitcher. He starts his warm-up tosses with his catcher, Alston Howard. While Renniff takes his warm-up pitches, we pause 30 seconds for station identification. This is WGY Schenectady, WGFM. Make this afternoon of World Series Baseball 
even more enjoyable with a tall, frosty glass of Ginger Perfect Saratoga Ginger Ale. Saratoga Ginger Ale is a happy blend of pure crystal waters and imported Jamaican gingers, plus just right carbonation. The result is a ginger ale unequal for zest and richness. Really refreshes because Saratoga Ginger Ale goes to the heart of your thirst and quenches it. Always have plenty of Saratoga Ginger Ale on hand, World Series time, and any time. Now on special sale at your favorite store. Gilliam to lead it off in the bottom half of the eighth. Willie Davis and Tommy Davis. They've just flashed on the big uh, pentagram board they have here. Tomorrow's probable pitchers. Whitey Ford for the Yankees and Sandy Koufax for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And we'll be here on the NBC radio network for that ball game. You'll be with us. Here's a fastball high and it's ball one. Hal Renner, the right-hander. He won four and lost three during the year. Gilliam batting left-handed. Reniff delivers. High. And it's ball two. Gilliam takes a look down at Pete Reister. This is a pitch that's controlled by the manager. Heard Austin, the manager, said more than once that if he had all ball players like Gilliam, he wouldn't have to use signs because he knows what to do at all times. On, Two nothing pitch. Gilliam takes it high and it's ball three. Three balls, no strikes. Elston Howard motions to his pitcher to come on down with that ball like he's maybe standing a bit too straight. The pattern has been that he has been wild high. If a fella gives you some consistency in his wildness, you can correct it in a hurry. Here's the three nothing pitch. Ball four. He walked it. He's wild high it's because he's throwing straight up, and wild low is because he's holding on a bit too long. And like the guy said, with that information, you too can be a pitching coach. <laughs> Here is Willie Davis. Stan Williams and Hamilton, Steve Hamilton, warming up for the Yankees. Here is Willie Davis with Jim Gilliam on at first base. One to nothing is the score. We're in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Lee Boyer in close at third base. Reniff at the belt. Gilliam leads. Here's the pitch. Davis bunts it down the first base line. A beauty. Pepitone makes the play unassisted as he tags Willie Davis with Gilliam taking second. the base on balls and the punt and the Dodgers have a man in scoring position with their fourth place hitter and their hot hitter Tommy Davis in the batter's box. Dodgers score their run with the walk, a wild pitch and a single by Davis. Well, Gilliam is on again. He scored that first run. He's on at second base again with the base on balls and a sacrifice. Renner at the belt. Tommy Davis waits to pitch. It's high, and it's ball one. Ralph Houck, Yankee manager, facing the Yankee dugout. Late Tommy Davis to pull that ball. Davis led the National League in hitting. Second year he's done it, back to back. He led it last year. One ball to count. Renner. There goes Gilliam. He's running. He swung on and missed the throw to third base. It is in time. They get him. Nice throw by Elston Howard. And Jim Gilliam is out attempting to steal Howard to Boyer. You know, from second base, very rarely do you get a steal sign. You usually ask the coach, can I come over? Feeling that you're 50% sure or more that you can make it. And the coach will give you a yes or a no answer. Gilliam feeling he could make it. Started over, and Howard, with a real fine throw to Cleve Boyer, nailed him. One ball and one strike. Tommy Davis had a good cut at the curveball, and here's the 1-1 pitch. Swung on. Tommy Davis started the swing, stopped, caught his spikes, and looked like a dance expert getting caught or something as he was just kind of jiggling around home plate. Two strikes, one ball. Renner with a good curveball. Here comes the right-hander again. Curveball swung on and missed. He struck him out. A bad ball. 
Same pitch that Tommy Davis chased. So that ends the inning, the eighth inning for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And the score at the end of the eighth inning, Los Angeles won and the Yankees nothing. Mother, a letter from Bob. Listen, dear Ruth, Chrysler Corporation warrants for five years or 50,000 miles, whichever comes first, against defects in materials and workmanship, and will replace or repair at a Chrysler Motors Corporation authorized dealer's place of business, the engine block, head, and internal parts, intake manifold, water pump, transmission case, and internal parts, excluding manual clutch, torque converter, drive shaft, universal joints, rear axle, and differential and rear wheel bearings of its 1964 automobile, provide the owner has the oil changed every three months or 4,000 miles, whichever comes first. The oil filter replaced every second oil change and the carburetor air filter cleaned every six months and replaced every two years and every six months furnishes to such a dealer evidence of performance of the required service and requests the dealer to certify receipt of such evidence and the car's then current mileage. Thinking of you always, Bob. Dear, are you sure you're doing the right thing marrying a car dealer? Well, here we go. It's the top half of the night. Tom Tresh, Mel and Pepitone. Drysdale delivers and Tresh swings and misses a strike one. 55,912 here at Dodger Stadium. Drysdale, three outs away. Big right-hander is ready to pitch to Tresh. It swung on, popped up foul, out of play. And a strike two. The scoring in the first inning, a walk to Gilliam. He went to second on a wild pitch. After Willie Davis lined to right field, Tommy Davis hit a shot off Bobby Richardson's glove and foot. Gilliam scored, and that's been it. One to nothing. Dodgers have made one run on four hits, one error. Nothing, three and all for the Yankees. Two balls hit to the outfield. Of the three Yankee hits, Kubek has two of them. Mickey Mantle is up there now, has the other one up one single. Mantle, batting left-handed, trying to tie it up with one swing of the bat. Drysdale delivers, swung on, a bouncy ball, scouring first base, has it. Going to take it himself, steps on the bat, there are two out. It's all up to Joe Pepitone. Joe Pepitone. He was hit by a pitch ball. Popped to the second baseman and bounced out. He's 0 for 2. Left-handed batter. Drysdale with two outs in the top of the ninth. Leading 1 to nothing. He has pitched a three-hitter so far. The big right-hander delivers... Ball all the way back to the screen. A fastball that got by Roseboro. One ball, no strikes. Don Drysdale, who's done it with the fastball and the curveball and changing speeds. He has just reared back and played good old country hardball. Rearing back and pumping. Big right-hander ready now. Here's the pitch. Swung on a fly ball. Right field. Ron Fairley going back near the fence. Going back. Back. He's there. He makes the play. Game's over. Dodgers win. One to nothing. Dodgers win. One to nothing. Joe Pepitone gave this crowd quite a thrill. But Ron Fairley backed up against the fence and made the play. And the final score, the Dodgers... One run, four hits, and one error. The Yankees, no runs, three hits, no errors. And in a moment, we'll review the highlights of the game for you.
And the final score, the Dodgers, one run, four hits, one error. The Yankees, no runs, three hits, and no errors. And in a moment, we'll review the highlights of the game for you. You've heard the expression, the human body is like a fine machine? Well, in many cases, the machine is like the human body. For example, your car's condition demands periodic checkups to maintain the peak of performance. Chrysler Corporation's certified car care does just that. It's like a car health program designed to prolong the life of your car. Certified car care. Specially trained mechanics with special tools at your Chrysler, Plymouth, and Dodge dealers. At the end of the first three games of the 1963 World Series, the Los Angeles Dodgers now have a formidable lead of three victories to none over the American League champion New York Yankees. And the Dodgers won it again here this afternoon at Dodgers Stadium in Los Angeles with the same formula that they'd won the first two games. They got out in front early and depended on rugged pitching, this time from Don Drysdale, to post the victory. They had one run on four hits and one error. The Yankees had no runs on three hits and made no errors. The scoring in the game all came in the opening inning. The one run, Gilliam Walk went the second on a wild pitch, and Tommy Davis sent him home with a two-out single into center field. There have been many wild pitches in World Series history, but this is the second time that a pitch has uh, assumed uh, real importance in a World Series ball game. Back in 1927, with the Pittsburgh Pirates, John Milgis, pitching in the ninth inning of the fourth and final game against the Yankees, made two wild pitches, and the second one came with a bases loaded and two out to allow the winning run to score. After the one run scored off the starter Jim Bouton, the Dodgers could score no more, though they threatened in the seventh inning when a Yankee double play cut down their potential in that inning. Meanwhile, Drysdale was a great pitcher. He struck out a total of nine, and he allowed only three hits, a bunt single by Mickey Mantle in the, first, in the second inning, and singles by Kubek in the sixth and the eighth inning. The Yankees loaded the bases in the second, but uh, Bouton, in a chance to get a run in, struck out for the third and final out of that second inning. Now the Yankees moved to another man as far as third base in the sixth inning when Kubek got that far, but he was left at third. Other than that, no Yankee got past first base against Drysdale, who was magnificent, winning his second World Series victory of his Major League career. Bouton is the loser, and Rennett pitched good ball in relief to take the loss. Don Drysdale the winner, and the Dodgers are now three up on the New York Yankees. The fourth game of the series here tomorrow, and it'll be Whitey Ford to try to get the Yankees in the win column, and he'll be facing the pitching hero of game number one, the Dodgers' Sandy Koufax. This broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our listening audience and any publication regarding broadcast or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the commissioner is prohibited. Our NBC engineer has been John Pollock. Our NBC producer, Al Ashby. And that wraps up the third game of the 1963 World Series. Be with us again tomorrow at 1245 for the fourth game of the World Series when your host, as today, again will be the Chrysler Corporation makers of all new 1964 Plymouth and the Gillette Safety Razor Company, world leader in shaving. The score once again, the Los Angeles Dodgers won and the New York Yankees nothing. This is the NBC Radio Network.